In this video, I'm going to describe the Go Context package because I got a lot of questions about it with people asking, how do I really use it? Why should I use it? I don't really understand it. Melky, can you do a video on this? And obviously I can. I make Go videos all the time. We love Go here. Look at this. Look at this pink plushie over there. They love Go. The Go context package is actually super important, but there's some misconception about it. You don't need context in every app you build, but there are particular use cases where the context library is very crucial. So the context package typically is seen when you have concurrent operations, like such as a Go routine, so you don't have a leaky Go routine or you don't have an execution that takes forever and your application is hanging. But context is also used heavily when you're just making, you know, HTTP requests or database queries. It's used predominantly with its context, with context timeout method and property to really control and make sure your application or your code is actually designed correctly. Not only is it about handling errors, which is also very important, but it's also handling the behaviors of when you call third party APIs or when you query a your database, which is massive or your query is just not optimized. So on my screen here, I have a very simple diagram. I'll showcase more in detail in just a second here of how context is typically handled and a very high level overview of it. So initially you have your parent function. This could be a main.go. This could be, you know, the entry point to your application. Typically, if you're using serverless, this is like the handler for your Lambda function, but this is where you declare your context. And this is where you declare a context with a timeout, with a deadline, meaning if within the context, the property of this context, whether it's passed through one API function or multiple API functions, the execution has to be contained within that timeout. And if it gets passed down to, you know, an app or a function called call API function, or this could be called third party function, query database function, whatever it is, then you basically have to ask yourself, is time to fulfill call greater than context? Meaning if I've executed the call to this third party and I'm hanging, I'm waiting for the result and it's longer than my context or the time is exceeded beyond my context, then we will error out. Otherwise, no, and we'll continue and we'll handle the logic as needed. Okay, cool. So I have my editor open. There's absolutely nothing. There's a go.mod file and a main.go file, and the main.go file is pretty much empty. But I'm going to show you an example of how context matters and how it's super important in the examples I just talked about. So let's go ahead and define a main function. Uh, just, you know, it doesn't do anything. It's going to be the entry point of our function, if you will. Uh, but this function, all it's responsible for is calling a third party API. So, you know, calling third party API. And what this API will do is it will check if a user is subscribed to a YouTube channel or not. I'm not actually gonna call a YouTube API or Google API, but this is just gonna be a high level example. All right, so let's define this third party API function. So first, it's gonna be func call third party API. It's gonna take two arguments. The first is context, which is context dot context. And then let's just say it's gonna take a user ID, which is type int, um, and all this is going to do is just a placeholder, but I'm, I'm exaggerating the, the functionality of an API. All right. And it's going to return a Boolean, which is true or false or an error. All right. And so let's say this third party API, when you call it, it takes 400 seconds, right? 400 times time dot milliseconds. So to complete this call, it's going to take you 400 seconds. And we're going to do just return. Uh, if nothing happens, we're going to return true and we're going to return the, uh, nil. Okay. So we're not going to get error anymore. Now I'm going to skip back to our main function because I'm actually going to declare our context in the parent function. So again, if you go back to the example here, this is our parent function. This is where I'm going to declare the timeout for the context handler. So you can do CTX context cancel is uh, context dot with timeout. And here you can put in the actual time so you can put in the context. So you're going to declare context background. This is the first time you're going to instantiate a context and you're going to give it the timeout. So let's say for our purpose, our parent function, our use case, our client need this, needs this to execute in 200 milliseconds. And you can already see that since our call to the third party API takes 600 or 400, I should say, this is going to be a problem. I'm going to do defer cancel because if you don't, this is going to leak your context timeout. It's going to just it could bleed over. It could be a mess. So remember, defer cancel super easy. It will probably complain if you don't add it. 
All right, let's just say user ID is something like 42069. Just some random numbers I have, you know, nothing crazy. So let's go ahead and call the third party API. So we're gonna do is user subbed and error is call third party API. We're gonna pass it in our context here and we're gonna pass in that user ID. If error does not equal to nil, then we can simply just log it and create a new error or do a far fatal log. So we can do something like log.fatal and we can say something like uh, error fetching user status, right? For, and we could put percent D and put user ID here. Otherwise, if is user subbed, then what we can do is just for the sake of this example, format FMT print F, we can say this user is subbed. Okay, so we already know if we call this call third party API function, it's going to error. Our context is for 200 milliseconds while we have a time sleep for 400 milliseconds, exemplifying a slow API. And we, this could be fine. You could do some error handling here, but we could do much better. So we could do if CTX, if our context has an error, and that error is context slash dot deadline exceeded, then this is where we can handle that error. So in this, we're gonna just return false, meaning the user is not subscribed, even though they may be, but we have an internal server error. However, the error message, we're gonna use the errors library here. We're gonna create a new error and say context timeout exceeded. And this is now mimic a correct way of a slow API and a context that is clamped down for a specific purpose. And I actually just noticed, I didn't actually handle this error at all or the error message. So error fetching user status for the user. And then we can put here error percent S and then we can append it to error here. Perfect. Now this should be fine. So if we open up our terminal and run go run main dot go, we can see here error fetching user status for 42069 error context timeout exceeded exit status one exactly what we expect but if we go back and actually do one of two things we can increase our context timeout so let's say this is 500 milliseconds and we go back and run the exact same go run main.go you can see here this user is subbed for 2069. So this is an example of how context is used to handle any dependencies your application may have on third party APIs or again, database groups or whatever Go context or concurrent execution executions you may have. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Let me know if you want me to explore any other package or if you have anything I may have missed in this video, please, I would love to see that comment. We're so close to 10K, so let's get the subscribers. If you haven't already, it means the absolute world to me, but I gotta leave you guys out with two things. One, do you use context a lot? Do you use it all the time? Are you a master of the context? Let me know what your use case is. And two, you got to power it.